Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for a model and rules review of the Mark 1C Demos Pattern Rhino by Forgeworld, or to give it its full Dark Age of Technology standard template construct name, uh, the RH1-N-0 Tracked Exploration and Multipurpose Defense Vehicle. Thank you very much for joining me. So yes, um, the Rhino one of the most ubiquitous transport vehicles uh, in the whole of the Warhammer 40,000 game. Uh, this dates back to the very origins of Warhammer 40,000 and this is a, uh, I think it was 2011 or 2012 re-imaging um, of the original Rhino uh, by Forgeworld. And yeah, and it is a very handsome looking model. And let's have a look at this model. So this is a mixed resin and uh, plastic kit so it uses the, the standard Rhino hull and the main sort of like superstructure and chassis and then adds a number of resin components onto it to give it this um, this look the look of well a look to replicate uh, the that original uh, plastic Rhino from 1987 and let's have a look around and this is certainly it's a very nicely executed re-imaging of a design so uh, it very nicely adds some bulk and substance to the basic Rhino um, and yeah and, and, and had, picks up all the classic design cues from the original model if we just have a look around it you can see that most of the resin detailing sits to the front of the front and sides of the vehicles But yeah, great looking model. So I mean, let's pick out these classic design cues. So obviously, first and foremost, we have the this this sort of double this double uh, plated front glasses plate with the uh, vision slits. Um, there was a in the original Rhino kit. There was a like a or a mono slit version, which um, then became associated later with the Predator tank and other things. And Forge will, you don't you only get one version in this. But if you do buy the uh, Rhino Scorpius uh, fire support tank you get a re-imaging of that version so if you were to buy a few of these you could mix and match around to uh, get those bits in um, classic Rhino style side so we have the these double opening doors um, very different to the ramp style that kind of folds down of the newer tank uh, these open to the side we have these tall exhaust stacks that run up the side of a vehicle and they're more exposed and prominent um, than the current Rhino variant or the 40k Rhino variant that this is based upon. And uh, the resin component also features on the side. Uh, and then it has um, a dozer blade, a faithful re-imaging of the original and, uh, and adds some nice detail into that as well. And then the cupolas as well. Now, I've used um, a number of upgrade parts on this model. So this is a scratch build, this heavy bolter position. Uh, and then this tw this combi bolter is from the Pinter weapon set. This kit, by default, comes with two single mounted bolt guns, one in each cupola. Uh, I've also added um, these smoke dispensers here. Uh, on the side and these are taken I believe these are the Land Raider Crusader design and I've used those because I, I want to I've got a standardized look across all my uh, Legion vehicles of using these and I like the chunkiness and the single piece design you do also get some some uh, parts in the Rhino kit but yeah so it's it is a, it's a really handsome looking vehicle this and um, as someone who bought the originals of this Rhino model uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly delighted by how this um, this re-imaging. So, uh, what was this kit like to build? Well, I actually I did a series on the construction of this kit, going from unboxing through parts washing, parts preparation, filling, um, assembly, conversions, etc., etc. So, there's a whole series of videos, and I'll leave some links on those. Um, so I'll just I'll just talk about a few call outs with this. I mean, this is a plastic and resin kit, so you have to be uh, aware of the, the specific needs of doing resin to plastic interfacing. So 
And a couple of things are, well, first of this dozer blade and it has like a, a flat attachment point. I built a, um, some milli put up behind the, this front armor bulkhead here. And then I pinned this in. I mean, you could magnetize it, but if you just stick it straight on, it'd be a bit fragile. So be wary of that. These side pieces are quite thin. And I think nearly, I think every example I've seen, and I've uh, three of these have passed through my hands, have all had some form of um, uh, warping um, from when they're being cast and then taken out of the mold. So they needed straightening out by heating them up and straightening them. Um, that's trickier than normal on most forge wall parts because they are so thin, it's easy to actually damage them. So if you are to get one of these and you do find that these are warped, um, be careful with heating them up and then reshaping them, not to completely bend them out of shape. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was this kit was well cast, you know, it was, I had no issues with it. It was 10 out of 10 for kit quality. Um, you know, I've, I've done some filling at the end to improve the fit and finish in a few places. As you can see, but you know, I mean, you know, you could probably get away without doing that. Um, depending on the sort of look you want. The Rhino kit is full, does have full interior detailing. Uh, I'm not interested in that, so I've sealed mine up. Um, but you know, if you wanted that option, uh, the interior detailing is there. Um, and one, and then the, I suppose the other thing I should talk about is weapon mounts on this kit. Um, so it comes standard with two single bolt guns in the Capolas, which works as a twin link, uh, a combi bolter in the game. However, if you, I built the Pinter weapon set here, which allows you to group the, that combi bolter up onto a single Capola. Uh, and then you can also mount a heavy weapon on the other Capola. And I used some parts from, well, various parts, but predominantly from a Sakaran battle tank and a few other sources to make this heavy bolter automated position. Uh, and I also didn't sit, stick this in place yet. I mean, this is just tacked in at the moment. Um, but this is interchangeable with um, Land Raiders, Capola weapons as well. So, yeah, so I did that. And there's other heavy weapons you can put on it here, here as well. So talking of a Land Raider, let's have a quick size comparison. So here's our, here's our Rhino. Uh, let's bring on a Mark 2B or not to be Phobos Land Raider. So yeah, you can you can see the relative size of the two vehicles. You know, and the, the Rhino is a substantially smaller vehicle, probably occupies around four about sixty percent of the volume of the Land Raider. But yeah, so it's a smaller, lower profile vehicle. Uh, easier to hide as well, and you can fit it down narrower bits of terrain than the Land Raider. And as I said, with the Capolas, you have the option, if I take that off and uh, bob on the multi melter, there you go, our Rhino has now become a tank destroyer. But yeah, so overall, no, I, I think it's a lovely looking model, this. Um, you know, as a fan of the early look of the game, it really ticks the boxes for me. Um, yeah, no, and, and the price is not bad either. Yeah, well, you know, because it's a plastic hybrid, it works out a little bit mech, more economical than buying uh, a pure resin kit. So yeah, a good model, very nice model. Okay, so let's talk about the rules on this thing. Uh, and I'm talking about the rules on this from the perspective of the Space Marine Legion Army list. Uh, and my reference point is the second edition, and I've got the, the black limited release copy of that, which I'm referring to. So uh, the Legion Rhino Armoured Carrier is a dedicated transport choice uh, in the Marine Legion. Its basic cost is 35 points. It has several rules. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a tank and it's a transport. Uh, its basic war gear is a searchlight smoke launcher and twin-linked bolter. So I said combi bolter before, didn't I? So I meant actually, I apologise, it's a twin link bolter. Um, and it has a special rule of repair. It can carry 10 models, um, but it can't carry anything bulky or bigger. And it also has two fire points as well. 
from this upper hatch. And we'll come back to that because that has tactical applications. And then in terms of access points, it has the two sides and then the rear ramp as well. So it's actually, for a small vehicle, it's very well uh, serviced by access points. Um, it's profile, so this is probably familiar to you, but I'm gonna you know, just state it for completedness. It's ballistic skill four, front and side armor is 11, so it's proof against bolter fire and the equivalent from the front and side. Rear armor is 10 and it has three hull points. So it's a pretty tough little vehicle. I mean, you know, it, it's not gonna win any tank duels, but it's, if you, if you keep it out of harm's way and use cover effectively, it's, it's not a soft vehicle either. It has a number of weapon upgrades. So standard upgrades are a hunter killer missile, a dozer blade, an auxiliary drive and extra armor. So the Rhino then also have the, has the option of upgrading um, to add an extra pintle weapon. So uh, obviously here I've done, uh, we've got the heavy bolter, but you can add an additional twin link bolter. So you can have two twin link bolters, a combi weapon, uh, a heavy bolter, obviously I said that there, a heavy flamer, a multi melter or a havoc launcher. So um, the Marine Legion doesn't have access to the Razorback armored uh, inf well, infantry fighting vehicle, but with the addition of these Coppola weapon upgrades, um, the basic Rhino actually becomes very close. And, you know, there's some weapons that are particularly useful. I mean, I guess combi weapons, you could go for combi melter or combi plas for a bit of punch. But um, the multi for me, the two standouts are the heavy bolter, which gives it some pretty decent support firepower to also coupled with a um, twin link bolter. But then the alternative um, neat option uh, is the multi melter. And yeah, for 15 points, you can turn this into a tank killer. And, you know, okay, there is a propensity of armored ceramite in available to troops in 30K, however, if you take a couple of rhinos with a multi melter and force your opponent to spend shell out loads of points on armored ceramite, then you've already won um, because you've uh, you've beaten them in the points game. But yeah, so so yeah, it's got some fire support and some tactical options. Now, then of course, clearly it's a transport. That is the main purpose of this. And if you buy one of these for your army, you end up with a very flexible tank because it can transport a huge number of marine units. And it, forgetting about any Legion specific options, you can carry a command squad, a veteran squad, destroyer squad, a tech marine covenant, tactical squad, uh, up to 10 men, a tactical support squad, uh, a reconnaissance squad, and then also a heavy support squad. All of those can take a Rhino as a dedicated transport. So, you know, you know, you, your imagination is limited in terms of how you then use that vehicle um, to support those troops. I mean, you know, I mean, for tactical support squads, you know, here we have uh, one of my tactical support squads, and these guys are armed with the uh, the weapon of champions, the rotor cannon. Um, you know, to support, if I was using it to move these guys around the battlefield, you know, I'll take the heavy bolter because I'm going to be keeping these guys at um, fairly long range. So yeah, so just add a bit of firepower into that and a bit of extra AP. Uh, likewise, same applies with a heavy support squad, um, you know, such as a Volkite Culverin. Stick the heavy bolt on, give them some extra range, or even put the multi melter on to, to give you some uh, short range threat against enemy tanks. And then of course you have the tactical Marines as well. Um, and, you know, here the vehicle's tactical flexibility comes into its own, uh, where you can use where you can use it as a way of getting your troops onto those objectives and to oppose enemy movements um, as well. So yeah, it turns a turns a tactical squad into a very mobile and potent uh, fighting unit. You know, and there's other neat little options as well. I mean. You know, I, I have a, I have a squad, an unusual squad. It's a squad of graviton gun troops and that I field through the um, head of a gorgon right of war for my um, iron hands. But because of the two fire points in the top, uh, I can move around and I can shoot the grav guns. So um, 
yeah, it has a kind of like a drive-by shooting capability as well. You know, and then uh, you, know, you can also do things like you can deploy your troops and you can stick your rhino in front of them. So if you're only opposed by small arms troops, and uh, you know you can protect themselves. So this little uh, this little metal box has got a, um, a tremendous number of applications on the battlefield. And you know, starting out at 35 points, um, it's an absolute bargain. And even this version here, with the heavy bolter um, and the ram or the dozer blade. Um, is only 50 points and sticking the multi melter on only takes up to 55 so yeah you know cheaper than an extra squad of marines i suppose the other great advantage with the rhino as well is because so many squads can take them you can filter a lot of extra firepower and armor into your arm army at a low cost and present your opponent with a with a bewildering array of armored targets to engage you know and if you put them alongside heavier armor assets as well your opponent then starts to uh, um, be really challenged and taxed as to how they're going to deploy their anti-tank firepower. Anyway, so there you have it. Um, the Rhino Armoured Carrier um, for the Space Marine Legion list. I hope you found that an interesting review. Um, I'd be interested to hear in the comments section how you use your Rhinos. Um, if you've got any novel applications, let me know. But thank you very much for watching. I will speak to you next time and goodbye.